welcome. Okay, again, hi David. Raphael, how are you? Thank you. Um, I'm doing great. I hope you are as well, and everyone listening. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, so we've spoken um, about um, we've spoken about um, ancient Egypt being a scam. Yes, um, I spoke about it with um, what's his name, Andreas, and yes. we spoke about ancient Greece being a scam. We've been through um, ancient um, Israel being a scam and Jerusalem. Yeah, the entire thing being a scam. You know. What about ancient Arabia? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, um, we went through um, some of the things about China being a scam. Yeah. Um, so I thought today um, let's talk about ancient Arabia. Yes. When we talk about ancient Arabia, um, this is very important because um, the thing is, um, let me, um, I don't know if you've, if you've, um, I've um, heard of these stories, but um, there's many stories that actually turn around and say that, um, you know, when Moses requested to Pharaoh, yes, that he would like to um, take the children of Israel for a um, pilgrimage. Yes, it actually says in the Bible he wants to go to the pilgr for a pilgrimage with these people for mm -hmm. um, three days in the desert. Have you heard of this story? Well, I only know that there's this huge idea about, I guess, the Israelites being led into the desert and 40 years or something, but I'm really not a Bible scholar. Yeah. So please maybe explain yeah. the official version yeah. and what you found. Right. This is according to the Bible. Yeah. He asks, according to the Bible, he asks Pharaoh. Oh, Jesus. Wait, let me just see. I typed in the wrong word. Yeah. Um, Moses. Um pilgrimage yeah he he requests for um, a pilgrimage um to go to the deserts with the children of israel so he requests with aaron yes and um, uh, um this is um what he is asking for, for uh, from pharaoh yes but um the thing is um you know nobody seems to understand what the hell is going on you know did he uh, originally say let my people go Yes, or did he um, just ask for a pilgrimage originally? Why why did Moses want to want to go? So he he's turning around and saying, um, what do you call it? Um, what he wants to do is um, saying, let my people go so that they make, so that they can do pilgrimage in the deserts. Now this is very suspicious. He's not saying, um, you know, King Solomon um, is supposed to have lived later according to the timeline of the Bible. So um, why is Moses asking a strange thing? He's asking Pharaoh, saying, hey, have you received the picture? Yes, let's see. Yes, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's saying uh, it's a strange thing. It, it would be absolutely ridiculous if I turned on to the American government and I said, please let the New Yorkers go. I want to go to the Arizona desert for a pilgrimage. Or um, if I turn around and said to the European Union um, president and said, let the Europeans go. We want to go to the Sahara Desert to make a pilgrimage to God. Doesn't seem like the most hospitable environment, I guess. Yeah, it sounds crazy. Yes. So um, um, now the thing is, um, there's, um, uh, um, there's some, somebody who's written a book about it. His name is A.V. Lipkin. He, he's um, American. And um, he's actually uh, mentioned, um, he's spoken about this, he's written about this too. And he said, um, um, what do you call, um, that's his name, um, The Return to Mecca. And then um, there's videos about him online. Um, let me see um, what the video, where the videos are, whereby he actually shows that, um, um, what do you call it, um, Moses commands the children of Israel to wear, um, to fill in, yeah? If many people don't know what tefillin is, it's basically to wear a cuba uh, on your head. Yeah, so this story is very strange. So if there's no temples in the desert, there's nothing there. At the time, King David hasn't um, even lived yet. Strange. What sort of a pilgrimage are you going to be doing in the desert? There's nothing to right. do there. Especially yeah. if there's no temples or something or somewhere to go to, no? Usually, Abs I guess. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing there. So um, now the thing is, he points out that uh, Mecca existed, uh, basically existed at the time, and that um, um, what Moses wanted was um, to take the to take the children of Israel to Mecca, and um, it looks like that was the only place to go. 
um, that building looks like a cube. Yeah, um, people call it a cube, but um, it's actually not. And um, I, I've sent it you. And um, there's even um, um, some Jewish people have mentioned this also. Um, I think in Israel, yeah, where they've said um, in the Song of Solomon, it, it basically talks about this Kaaba. And it says, I am black, but lovely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar. And um, it, um, the cloth is there basically representing a tent. Yeah. And um, so the thing is, it's, it's very straight. Have you received the picture? Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, stra very strange, um, this thing um, to do with Arabia. Yes. And the thing is, um, let me just send you a few more things. What um, 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 AV shows. And um, what he shows is um, his um, screenshots from his video. He said um, um, that um, Moses commanded, or God commanded, yeah, to put on their forehead, you know, the tefillin, um, as a sign from God that we are leaving the pyramid system of slavery in Egypt and we're going to go to the cube system of freedom in Arabia. That is, a, even I agree with him uh, uh, up to a big extent. And um, it looks like that is the story of um, what Moses was demanding pilgrimage at first. Yes. And um, um, Mecca, in fact, is not a cube. It's actually something else. Yes. I forgot the name for it. You actually mentioned about this in Kaaba is not a cube, Kabbalah 33rd degree yeah. on a previous It's, it's actually mm -hmm. something else. I, for, I forgot what it is. A tesseract. Yes. Uh -huh. Let me um, show you what a tesseract is. And then um, people will start to see what this is. Yes. So now if you actually um, study um, the Kaaba, it's not a cube. So the thing is, it's, it's um, whoever did this, it's with the cardinal points. And um, the thing is, it's actually a tesseract. Yeah. A tesseract is like, um, it's like we live in the third dimension. And um, this also explains um, why the Holy Roman emperors got um, crowned at Aachen Cathedral. Aachen Cathedral has a dome there, octagonal, octagonal center. Like a, an octagonal center is, is when you look at um, a tesseract, um, from a different angle. Have you received the Tesseract? Yes. Yes. Now, now the thing is, um, this is why I've always said, um, you know, um, Moses had more to do with freedom. Yes. Um, you know, even um, um, Lipkin Av, um, he, um, he agrees with me. Yes. And um, yeah. It, and it, just to briefly is... ask, because I hadn't heard this reference to the Tesseract yet. From what I understand, the way I learned about it, as it shows in the Wikipedia image, the Tesseract is more like an illusion. A illusion, not illusion, but with an A, ah, to, to okay, a hyper-dimensional thing, but yes. would it have a particular yes. dimension? So in the third right. dimension, it would so, also so not I'm, be a perfect uh, yes. cube, do I understand yes. that correctly? Because I didn't know that. Yes. I thought it was a perfect cube yes. in 3D, but if it's not, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So so I, I'm, go I, I'm going to make this very simple. We live in the, in the three-dimensional world, yes, whereby people can take advantage and tell you lies. People believe many things like I don't like admitting this, but um, I'm going to admit this. Yes, um, there are m many um, J Jewish documents that turn around and say that um, you cannot go on top of the Temple Mount unless if you're absolutely clean and things like this. Yes, and, um, you know, many things. So I've generally been afraid to go on to Temple Mount. In um, what um, in, in the West, we call it Jerusalem. But um, now I've, I've realized I've got to call it Quds because that is not the, the city of Jerusalem. So the thing is, yeah, I will admit, yeah, sometimes I believe things, you know, people tell you and then you don't check. So now the third, we live in the third dimension. We can believe things because we don't check and we don't know. We're not born with this knowledge. We're not born with um, knowing that um, New York's in America or uh, um, Jakarta's in Indonesia, Bandung's not far from Jakarta. You know, we just don't know these things. Or Glodok is not far from um, Jakarta airport. We don't know these things. I'm sure you probably didn't know, yeah, that there's an area called Glodok. Oh, it's full of the Chinese community. Yes, and um, many of them are involved in business with mainland China. Yeah, I knew because, you know, when you go there, you find out, you learn more, or you study things. So now the thing is, um, you know, I've always seen Moses as a freedom fighter. Yes, that he, um, he was demanding for freedom. And the thing is, you know, the history of the pyramids is a lie. But um, um, the thing is, um, even the timeline of Moses is a lie. But we don't know when the pyramids were built. And we don't know if um, the first one was already there or if there were smaller ones. And we don't know what's underneath the big bricks that the, 
or, or the, the small ones as you look up, what's underneath them? We really don't know. But there is evidence that um, there was a lot of mining going on there in that region. So that's another long story. I'll go through it another time. So now the thing is, the cube represents the fourth dimension. So now the fourth dimension is whereby you have knowledge um, that's um, you know outside our third dimension, where you can see things and perceive things in a different way. Yes, and so this is knowledge from God. Um, this is what they say in um, you know in, in a spiritual way, or um, you know uh, many people will say it's a Masonic way. So now the thing is the way the Kaaba is, it's more of a tesseract, whereby it's showing that. Um, what do you call it? That um, it's beyond the fourth dimension, multidimensional. Right. And um, the thing is, God is beyond all this. God is, um, um, this is why in core Judaism, yes, and core Christianity or original Christianity and original Jewish thinking, they turn, and in Islam, yes, original Islamic thinking, they turn around and say that God is beyond the universe. God created the universe. He's not part of it. Wouldn't, but now in, just to ask in one many question, modern... Wouldn't that also be the, the idea why there is this strong prohibition against idolatry? Because of this awareness that ultimately you cannot represent God because it is beyond. It is within and beyond. Yes, you can't. So so the thing is, um, but the, the point of, of um, that being, um, you know, um, one It's, it's the fourth dimension um, people pray towards there. And um, the evidence from um, what A.V. Lipkin shows, yeah, uh, I would have to say he's done amazing work. Yes, um, and the thing is, uh, the evidence um, looks pretty clear that if ancient Egypt, yes, was the location of, of um, what we call um, Misr today, or Mizraim, yeah, yeah um, what is known as Egypt, that, and he crossed into the deserts, then he would have ended up in Mecca. Or if ancient Egypt was actually in Europe from Constantinople and he crossed into Anatolia and the, went to the desert for a pilgrimage, it's, it's the same either way. But anyway, the thing is, um, the Tesseract is beyond the fourth dimension. So I didn't mention this before. So whoever um, um, thought of this Kaaba has thought of it in such an amazing way. But the thing is, um, Avi Lipkin is more political. Yes, um, the thing is, um, he's made some statements that are, that are not really, um, you know, I wouldn't agree with him, um, but um, let me send you um, a few more things that he said. Yeah, um, you can find um, his videos online. Yeah, he says that the Kaaba, which is today Mecca, and God says in Deuteronomy 11, the borders of Israel would in include the desert to the south, that is the desert of Arabia. Now, the thing is, yes, I don't agree with him on that, because the thing is, greater Israel was actually Euroasia. It's even greater, and mm -hmm. it and the evidence shows, um, um, you know, that um, the children of Israel was actually the Holy Roman Empire. The Germanic people are the children of Israel. I do know that there are some people in the Jewish community who say no, they are Amalek, and um, they believe they're Amalek. So just because yes, I recently the... spoke to someone who knows more about this than I do, I heard that it could be that the so-called Germanic people are the tribe of Judah. Could you say anything about that? Ah, wait. Now, now, the thing is, um, I wrote about this in, in my book called The Last Crusades. Now, the thing is, for example, there is no evidence there is a tribe called Levi or a tribe called Judah. We cannot prove this. Yes. And um, the thing is, also, the names of the tribes are um, mixed up because, um, for example, I I'll give you an example here now. So there's supposed to be 12 children of um, Israel. But um, many people don't know that um, Ephraim, yes. And Manasseh are classified, yes, um, uh, as um, tribes of Israel. Now, um, this is very strange because Joseph is supposed to be one tribe of Israel. But then Joseph had two sons. And according, according to modern Judaism, yes, and according to Christianity, yes, um, that um, Joseph's two sons got the equal share as Jacob's sons. So that would make 13 tribes. But then Levites were supposed to be just priests. So there's no evidence that the Levites are actually part of the tribes. Now, the thing is, um, if somebody is going to turn around and talk about the tribes, the evidence shows, this is what the evidence shows, that um, the tribes of Israel, yes, um, what we call the children of Israel, the evidence shows, starts from China, in the, um, China and Russia in, in um, Northern Asia, and in the South, 
from India, northern India and Bangladesh, and it comes to the other side, to let's say Mauritania, Mali on the south in the western side, and to England and Norway on the other side. This, these are the children of Israel, from what I've found. Now, now, now the a Asiatics and um, the Africans, um, um, I don't classify them as children of Israel from, from um, the evidence that I have seen, that God created many other people. Now, the thing is, um, people will dispute with me, but this is my personal opinion. So the thing is, because I can't prove it, yeah, I'm not going to tell anybody to believe me in this. But this is from my research based on Fomenko. Like, for example, um, somebody turned around and said, Fomenko, yes, um, um, Anatoly Fomenko, he turned around, uh, um, you said, take a look at the comments. So I did. Yeah, and um, Anatoly Fomenko um, turned around and said, Christianity, yes, um, divided into Orthodox Christianity, in the East anyway, Eastern Europe, he divided into Orthodox Christianity and to Islam. But the, what people don't understand is, what was Anatoly Fomenko referring to? When he said Christianity, he was not referring to the Christianity of today. He was referring to original Christianity because the Christianity that he said um, that became Orthodox Islam and Orthodox um, Christianity. Yes, shall I show you um, what he found? Yes, he found that in these, in these so-called... Um, um, wait, let me just send you his quotes, then um, um, then people will be able to verify th this themselves. Um, or th I, I don't want anyone to think I'm making this up. Yeah? Um, um, that that um, Professor Fomenko pointed out that, um, that um, these churches had the Quran, yes, inside them. So this was the Christianity, yes, that Fomenko turned around and said. So Fomenko turned around and said, let me show show what he said. So many people f find it hard to understand it because he wouldn't make it clear. So today I'm going to make it clear. The, of, of course, there were political repercussions and the Soviet Union had just collapsed and um, things were in chaos. But what does he turn around and say? The word Allah was used by the Russian church. So these Christians yeah, in Eastern Europe, don't forget, Russia's borders were in Eastern Europe in them days. Yes, all the way up to Prussia. So now these um, Russians or um, Slavs, they're using the word Allah. And then what else are they doing? Yes, uh, they're praying with the Quran. They've got the Quran inside these so-called churches. This is the Christianity that Fomenko is talking about, you see? And then it divided into what we call modern Orthodox Christianity, which has got many groups, yeah, which is only recent and into modern orthodox um islam and modern orthodox christianity but um let me just um show show um a few more things what fomenko has shown yes because um the thing is um um let me just show um what he actually showed yeah well um what fomenko pointed out like here you can have a look um these are the most common coins um found throughout russia so now these, this is the Christianity of Russia. Yes, that Fomenko is pointing out that there are these coins that say there is no God but Allah. This is the original Christianity. And then it divided into modern Islam and modern Orthodox Christianity. Mm -hmm. Yes, that we cannot even find the title Islam before. They were called Muslims or they were called Mohammedans or they were called Slavs or uh, slaves, Slavs. They were given different names. Yes. Yeah. So um, have you received um, the coins, for example? Yeah. And in the helmets of the Russian kings, you know, um, the helmets, um, let me um, just show. So he, um, Fomenko has shown and made it clear saying, hey, yes. Um, what do you call it? Let me just um, um, show it you, even though people have already seen it. It's important that they see it again. Then they will know what is this original Christianity that um, was there. It um, people didn't call it original Christianity. This is the terminology I'm using. Um, so the thing is, um, Fomenko pointed these things out. So um, let me um, just show. Um, yeah. Or otherwise, um, somebody will think I'm making it up. Um, I, 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 um, because it was an important comment that somebody put saying, um, I basically don't understand Fomenko said this. Why is it not opening up? Jesus. 
Oh, it's it's not opening up. Wait, oh, I'll have to find it somewhere else. Just give me one second, and sure. then I will I will show you an example. So the thing is, um, the thing is, these um original Christians that um Fomenko pointed out. Yes, I thought I had it here, but I can't seem to find it. I don't know. Nope. Unlucky, but um, I'm not going to accept unlucky because I don't want anyone to think I'm making this up. I know that so, you, you showed the, the crowns of the Russians. Are, I found you it. You showed the swords in other yes. videos already. Yes. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I found it. So now here, here is an example. You know, um, they give him the name Alexei Mikhailovich um, today. Yes, who knows how his original name was pronounced. It was probably Ali Shah or something. God knows. But anyway, the thing is, um, here, what does it say on this helmet? Let me just have, a, have another look. Because now these are Christian kings. So, ah, this has actually got an entire, um, entire, um, is, it's got the verse of the throne from the Quran written upon it. So um, it shows who these Christians are. Yes, so the thing is, um, Fomenko, yeah, he's given them the title Christians. Sometimes he calls them, um, let me just show you, he turns around and says, um, he turns around and says that this empire, yes, of um, this so-called Christian empire, which is a Muslim empire at the same time, he calls this the caliphate. Yes, he turns around and says, um, what do you call it? Yes, yes, that, um, um, what do you call it? Yes, um, let me just um, send you this. Um, um, uh, yes, that he turned around and says that um, um, that this empire, yes, this empire, yeah, call it Christian, but this empire is the same empire because he says they're duplicates. And um, the thing is, it's the same empire, but they've just given it, you know, different names. So now this same empire, this empire is actually the so-called biblical kingdom of Israel. And he says... Uh, that Israel, as mentioned in these religious sources, uh, ecclesiastic source, ec ecclesiastical sources, what we call Christian sources or Islamic sources, was actually this gigantic empire of the Middle Ages. And did this gigantic empire, yeah, the Muslims call it the caliphate. Yes, the Islamic mm -hmm. ones, because now um, the thing is the Muslims are going to rejoice and say, hey, there's Arabic here. This means this was the Muslim empire. Now, Fomenko points out, no, this is the Christian empire at the same time. So now people are going to be rejoicing, saying, ah, this is the Christian empire. We told you so. But then Fomenko says, no, this is the same one as ancient Israel. Yeah. This is the same one. The, the, it's because he shows that they copied the same timelines and um, they just invented the history. That, um, um, for example, the Holy Roman Empire is very important because I, I don't like using um, words to degrade anybody. But um, if you have a look at the Holman, Holy Roman Empire timeline, it is the same as the kingdom of Judah in the Bible. Now, it means it means that either one was invented or they were both invented or they're both the same. Yes. Or it was one empire and the entire history has been fabricated and been given different names. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what Fomenko turned around and showed is that, hey. It is impossible for it not to have been one empire because the Muslims are turning around saying, hey, we've got these same kings and they're written in our history. Now, um, the Jewish people are saying we've got these same kings. This is written in our history. Now we've got the Christians who are turning around saying we've got the same kings and it's written in our history. Let me just show you a, a, a bit of a, 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 a bit of the um, a bit of the big joke here. Yes. Um, you know, when we talk about Charlemagne, you've heard of Charlemagne. Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, it's like um, when I was younger, um, Charlemagne, you know, I, I always admired him, you know, in high school. So now the thing is, um, um, Charlemagne um, was said to have laid the foundation for Aachen Cathedral. Now, Aachen Cathedral is also the layout is of octagon. Yes. And if you look at it from um, a spiritual point of view, um, somebody would say um, octagonal to represent the cube from the air or as a tesseract, which is mysteriously the same as the Dome of Rock in Jerusalem. Now, I've not mentioned this before, yes, but um, but um, let me just show you an example of, um, what do you call it? What's that building called? Al-Aqsa Mosque in um, Jerusalem. 
Yeah, this is not in my books either. Yeah, but um, Al-Aqsa Mosque, if anybody has a look at it, yes, this is next door to the Dome of Rock. Now, Al-Aqsa Mosque is very suspicious. Yes, um, here is a picture of it, yeah, um, you know, around 100 years ago. And it's strange because um, the historians of that time wrote down Al-Aqsa Mosque, like Alaska. And then when you have a look at it, yes, it just looks like a Gothic cathedral. Now, somebody's going to turn around and say, oh, but the Gothic cathedrals are higher. Yeah, they've got a second floor. Yes, um, but what many people don't know is, um, let me just send something, is that Gothic cathedrals were modified greatly in the um, 18th, uh, 18th and 19th century. Yes, that we, um, they modified them greatly, and it was only in the 19th century that they added the second floor onto... Um, Cologne, Cologne Cathedral. Yeah, let me um, just um, send this so that people can, can see this themselves. Um, then they will know um, the thing is. And if you remove the second floor and if you remove the tower, which is only added on in the 19th century, if you remove this, then do you know what we have? We have the same building like the so called, um, what's that building called? Alaska Mosque that's in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. So then this raises the question of who actually built Alaska Mosque and the Temple Mount? Yeah, because the strange thing is, yeah, it's basically the similar masonry, similar everything. And we've got the Holy Roman Empire that's doing crusades and they've got Arabic writing all over them. Now, the thing is, um, if, you, if you had a look at the desert Bedouins, have you received the picture of Cologne Cathedral, whereby they're doing yes. the second floor? Uh, after 1855, yeah. So we've got photographic evidence. So now if we just go to the first floor, remove the statues, remove the extra decoration, we've just got the same building that's in Jerusalem. Same with Aachen Cathedral and the rest of these cathedrals in Europe. They only have the first floor. So now the thing is, why were they unfinished? Why were they left unfinished for many centuries? Now, the thing is, it's not written in Christian documents, but Muslim, um, the Muslim Quran um, says the story why many of these buildings were unfinished. Yeah. And um, let me just send you photographs of the tower being completed, because um, this is just a joke. Many people are imagining, you know, free energy towers, this, that, everything. And um, the thing is, um, uh, I, um, the thing is, you know, they're not looking at something else like this is after they finish the second floor. Can you see they're putting the towers there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So so they're putting these things there now. And um, that building, let's go back to Alaska Mosque. This is why I turned around and said to many people, I said, if you want to understand the cathedrals, we have to go to go to the Middle East where they've not changed them. So now let's have a look at this um, Alaska Mosque. Yeah. Alaksa, it's called today. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, have a look at this. They've modified the outside, yes, and um, um, after an earthquake, I think it was in 1927. But um, let me send you um, a bigger picture to have a look at this. Yeah, and it, um, if you look at pictures of that region, yes, um, you know, even 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they don't seem to have yeah, the um, um, capability to build these things. Yes, uh, well, not uh, they did, but not that much. <coughs> Sorry, I just had um Chinese, and the oil <laughs> is on my neck. Yeah, and um, so, so have you seen it? The arches at the front, on the side, they redecorated everything after the earthquake. So now here is another one. This one is very important. This is called Beersheba Mosque. I've been trying to figure this building out. Can you see it? Have you had a look? It's only one mm -hmm. floor. Right. Yeah. Now, the thing is, they're very gothic on the outside. And if you modify them even more, just add another floor, then they become gothic cathedrals. Now, I found pictures of this, you know, like 100 years ago. And then, uh, and then it's strange. This place is in the middle of the desert. There's nothing there. There's actually basically nothing there 100 years ago. It's in Beersheba in Israel today. And um, I don't know why, um, you know, um, the, the local council have refused to let the, um, you, you know, Muslims use it. Don't know why. But um, it, the, there are other reasons why. Yeah. Of course, some people will say that's oppression. Yes. But um, the thing is now in modern Islam, they're teaching other things. I'll have to go through it next time. But um, yeah. Have you found it? Bishiba? There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Who built this building and why? 
It just doesn't make sense. Look at this. It's a Gothic cathedral. Um, it, it is the same like Cologne Cathedral, a smaller one. And there's absolutely nothing there. Can you see it? Yes. yes. So it just doesn't make sense who built these things. Now, <clears throat> another thing is I had a look at this. I found this very strange. Yeah, that in World War One, yes, um, the, the German Kaisers and the royal family. Um, um, ha, have you ever had a look at this? Um, what do you call it? The so-called um, royal family in World War One of the um, Germany and um, England and Russia. They were all cousins. Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Let me let me just just show this. Um, because this is very suspicious. Well, even the general idea people... that the House of Windsor actually was a, a German house before, right? Yes, but there is more. Yes, many people. Um, when when I send you this, you'll soon start to get the idea. Yeah, this is a photograph or a claimed photograph of um, what do you call it? Two of these cousins. I forgot which ones. Yes, um, one of them is King George, and the other one is the Tsar or the Kaiser. Yes, and um, the Tsar of Russia. Now, the thing is, um, you, there's more photographs. Let me just show you these photographs, and then everybody will know that they're forgeries. The truth is, they're such forgeries. What they've done is that these forgeries are so, so bad that we cannot even find. Actually, the evidence shows there was no Kaiser in Germany at the, at the time, that it was still the Holy Roman Empire ruling um, Germany, but Germany had principalities and cantons, and half of them had already joined England and the Vatican, and the other half didn't, yeah, during World War One. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, many people can see that the suspicious photographs, like, let me just show you, have a look at this, and then you will know these so-called dodgy photographs of these so-called kings and princes that they've got together. But um, the thing is, um, 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 have a look here. None of them are looking at the camera. You'll see a similar thing with John F. Kennedy's family. Um, they've got some photographs that they try to show that they're an actual family or something. And the photographs are dodgy and suspicious. The, the evidence shows that um, there was no Romanov family in Russia. This is what Fomenko shows. They invented the timeline. The really? Romanov kings were invented. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. let me just um, show you um, what Fomenko shows. Yes, that there was some other ruling party and they invented the history of the Romanovs. Let me just um, show you what Fomenko himself shows. Um, yeah, that um, you can see there's Arabic writing on, on these, um, 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 on the rulers of Russia, that it's impossible. Yes, um, they are the king, um, the, um, the princes of the kingdom of Israel. Russia is Israel. Germany are the children of Israel too. And um, But wait, let me just find this. Um, what chapter is it going to be? Ah. In Fomenko, let me see now. Um, because the thing is, it's, it's just a total joke. We cannot even find um, um, the so-called Romanov Empire. It's just fictional history. And they, and they, they, um, when they invaded, they told the people there's Romanovs, things like that. But they didn't, didn't um, actually exist. And then um, they falsified the then history. Just to ask, let... would you say the same for the Austrian Emperor uh, Franz Josef? Oh yes. One? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, th this is what they've done. Yes, Fomenko has actually shown this. So I'm going to send that to you in a minute. I'm going to send them both. Yes, th then we can clear this. Yes. Um, so here now is the so-called um, the Romanovs, or, or uh, no, or the Russian mm -hmm. kings up to Ivan the Terrible and the so-called Habsburg Empire. Yes, up to 1600. Yeah. Now, uh, what we're seeing is a, a duplicate of the kings and um, the number of years they've modified them here and there. Have you received it? Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so so, it's like, um, who's ruling who? Are the Habsburgs ruling Russia? Are the Russians so, ruling okay. the Habsburgs? Just this goes only, let's say only, quote unquote, up to about 1600. So what ah, about the more recent the reason, ones? Ah, the, ah, the reason why I've not gone through this is, is because the truth is, actually, Fomenko's made that many charts that you're going to think um, it's going to take too long to explain all these charts. Yes, That's it's just that, actually... of course, people are especially curious, I would say, about the things okay. that are pretty recent, oh, okay. Okay. where there's video oh, okay. evidence, okay. supposedly. Okay. All of that. So this is why um, now um, I'm going to, uh, instead of Arabian history, um, I was going to show you ancient Arabia is a lie today, but um, I I've sent you many charts now. I'm going to go through through these a bit faster now. These, uh, this is the same chart timeline, and look at what they've done. 
Now, on the first chart, it shows, have you opened it, Roman Empire? Yeah. Um, alleged years 82 BC to the 3rd century. Now, when you go down from there to the year um, two, um, 217, the Roman Empire, and then you continue the Roman Empire, yes, from the year 270, and carry on going down, they've just repeated it for the Roman Empire timeline. This is the same empire from 82 BC all the way to the 4th century. And at the, on the left-hand side, people won't understand these graphs. That's why I wrote my books, because I noticed many people found it difficult to understand um, and yeah. um, what Fomenko is showing. So Fomenko is showing on this first graph from the time of around Julius Caesar. Yes, and it goes all the way down to um, what do you call it? You know, the, the barbarians, the Gothic Wars, that they're fighting and notice the number 33 or 33. Yes, um, you know what they use. Yes, in um, some of their codes. So then he goes down there and we come to the year 217. Yes, the, the Emperor Caracalla or Septimus Severus. Yes, and then after that, we go to the year 270 and we continue. And all they've done is just reverse the graph and invented the names. Can you see this? And then we end up to the end of the Third Roman Empire. Yeah, and all they're doing is fighting the barbarians during that time period of 400 years. What the hell? So this is just Rome. So now on the second graph, we, we've got the biblical kingdom of Israel and the Roman Empire from the from the fourth and fifth century. Yeah, so they're just using it. Or, or there's another one, um, Byzantine Empress and small kingdom of Athens. And they're using the same graph again and again. The Roman German Empire from 911 AD, notice they use the year uh, 911. Yes, all, all, the, all the way to the 13th century. And then we compare that Yes, this is the um, Holy Roman Empire to the Habsburg Empire from the 13th century. And you can see they've just reversed the, reversed the graphs. And um, it just goes on that he's shown multiple empires. The Holy Roman Empire in the 13th century, Kingdom of Judah, the, the Kings of England and the Byzantine Empire. You could just go on and on. Can you see this? They've copied yeah, this I'm going from through the country. graphs, yeah. Yes, because what they did... Yeah, so there is the Roman Empire or the German nation with Otto the Great and the biblical kingdom of Israel, not the kingdom of Judah. Have you got to that graph? Uh, because I sent you a graph showing the Holy Roman Emperors and the kingdom of Judah. What about the kingdom of Israel now? Because now we can see they've copied it to the kingdom of Israel. This means that the kingdom of Israel reflects the kingdom of Judah, which reflects Russia as well as, you know, the Holy Roman Emperor. They've just been copying. Yes, inventing names and changing this history. I will tell you why and how they how they did and this. Just well, want... before you before you go into this, just one additional question. I mean, didn't they have dice or something? Because if I would want to forge this, I mean, it worked well enough, obviously. But if I want to forge this, I would introduce some randomness so it doesn't become so apparent. Yes, they I... have. This is what they've done. That's why. Yeah, but not enough, it seems. Not... Yeah, yeah, that's but why not, they're not yes, that's true, but they're, they're still not, very close. Yeah, mm -hmm, yes. No, they're very close, but uh, they're very close. Um, it's actually up to 85% similarity. 85% is too much. We're talking about the entire history of Europe and the Middle East here. This is just too much. The entire history of Europe and the Middle East is, is a basic forgery. They've just copied it from country to country, and I will tell you how they made it different. Different stories, different names. It's like some people noticed that Charlemagne's story. Now, I will show you how they did this. Now, you're going to think, yeah, um, wouldn't people wake up? No, they didn't. Let me just um, um, show you how. This shows, um, you, know, how, um, you know, how stupid um, us humans can be. So this is according to official history. I'm sending you from university academias on what they're writing down. And the, you're going to think, God, I can't believe people actually believe this. Yes. So now Charlemagne matches King Solomon in the Bible. Do you know what they're actually saying? Yeah. So now the people did realize this. People do, do question. So do you know what they've already got done? They've, uh, they've created forged manuscripts and saying because they had to destroy Solomon. So now they invented uh, Salimane, Salomon, Solomon. Yes. And they right. said Salomon was the kingdom of new Israel. And then they turned around and said, Charlemagne is, is known to be similar to King Solomon. And then they said, ah, his father, they just gave him a new fake name, Pepin. And they said, oh, Pepin was the new King David. Eh? New King David, new King Solomon? And then they, you know, you know, they just invented it. And then let's have a look at what happened after the, the death of Charlemagne or King Solomon. Yes? Now, uh, you, it's because we've, uh, we've actually believed these myths in school. 
We just believe it. But when you go from country to country, yeah, then you'll soon realize this is in my book, Jerusalem um, Europe is um, Jerusalem is in Europe. Now, have a look at this. After the death of Charlemagne, yeah, um, the kingdom split up into two. And basically it became um, France and Germany. Yes. After the death of King Suleiman or Suleiman or Solomon, the kingdom split into two, Israel uh -huh. and Judah. Yes. And then the timelines are the same, different names. They've used this in other sides of the world. What did they? Do? What What have they done? Um, the, the U.S. president's timeline is split into two: north and south. Yes, the Islamic mm -hmm. caliphate split into two: Sunni and Shia. Christianity split into two: Protestant and Orthodox. The Roman Empire split into two: east and west. You see. So could it be that this was not even part of a deterioration process, but just that whenever the power shift occurred? Because everybody was probably a lot more united than they wanted to appear, they made up a story of splitting up and all of that. Or what would be oh, the reasoning? Of course, of course they did. You can you can see you can just see the breakup of Yugoslavia. Now, anybody who has a look at look at um, Yugoslavia, this is in the last 20 years. Yeah, you will see what um, the nationalists have done in in Croatia, what the nationalists have done in Bosnia, what the nationalists have done in in Kosovo, nationalists in Macedonia. You know, Macedonia has had that row with Greece where they're saying, ah, oh, ours is Alexander the Great. When I went to Skopje, the capital city, they built these new buildings there to show uh, a, a new Macedonian greatness, Macedonian um, um You know, David, um, you know, today every nation state claims it's the greatest. You know, I was always suspicious of yes. this. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so now they've got um, Alexander the Great. So now if you go next door to Albania, they'll say we've got um, Aliskander Beg the Great. Iskander Beg, they call him. Yes, but they are going to say Iskander Beg lived in the Middle Ages. Yes, and then um, the Macedonians are going to say Alexander lived in, in the ancient times. Then you go next door to Bulgaria, and what do we have there? Alexander Nevsky. And they're going to say okay. that um, um, he lived in the Dark Ages. So which one are you going to choose? You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Yes. So so the more so people look at this, it, it just becomes um, a, a bit of a joke. Yeah, it's like... Um, You know, I've always, I've always found it's like um, we find Charlemagne amazing in um, Germany, places like that, or King Arthur is amazing in um, British history. That um, Alexander Nevsky in many Slavic countries is like amazing. Yes. So um, Fomenko went through Alexander from, um, Nevsky, and um, for example, and um, it, it goes back to Attila the Hun. It's like I, I didn't want to mention him, um, but um, since we're at it, I'll. Um, I'll go through it. Let me just um, find this Europe folder. Is it going to be here if I can find it? Uh, I don't know. I ah, yes, I do. Uh, yeah. So what, what Fomenko shows about um, about um, um, the history of um, um, At Attila the Hun, that um, um, the thing is actually, Yes. Who was Otto the Great, the first holy Ro official Holy Roman Emperor? Now, this is going into it a bit more deeper. Yes, because the thing is, um, there is Attila Han and many people call him the Khan or the king. So now Fomenko wrote this um, um, showing an international point of view. I, I didn't mention this before because um, it was too deep. But um, the thing is, it's like so I noticed somebody put the comment saying hey, in Sweden, we all say Alemoen or Aleman or things like this. Yes. Now, the thing is, it's because um, we were one people. So now here I've sent you two pages. Now, um, the thing is, um, the conquest of Europe, um, you know, Euro-Asia, the, there was this Khan. Yes. Or Konig. Yeah. If you're going to go to Scandinavia. To the Vikings. Now, I forgot which document this is. This is in F Fomenko's book, The Issue with Baptism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And he goes to. So now the, this king was called Otto or Utman in Arabic or uh -huh. Usman, Utman in Turkish. Otto, man, Utman, Allah, man, the men of Allah. Yeah, the man, Ot, Otto, Attila. Yes. Atta, Ila, Allah. You see? Yes, that's why Italy is still named after it. But now, so this man, um, uh, um, you know, there's many nicknames they gave him in Russia, like Sviatoy, he's showing which means holy. Yes, Atta, Atta, Ila, Atta, Ila, Allah, Allah, Hala, 
holy Hallah's Roman Empire. Yes. So the thing is, um, now this king was called Otto or Ot. Call him Ot. He was in the land of Vilkins or the Vikings. Yes, a great king. And he ruled over this land for a while. And he's the great Khan. He gathered his troops. He invaded Poland. And his army was so big, many warriors, many battles. He confronted the army and he defeated all these others who reigned over Russia. And then he conquered most of Greece and Hungary. This is Scandinavian history. Who's this king Oth? Yes. Yeah, you see? So um, the thing is, um, you know, so Fomenko points this out. He even... He conquered like Smolensk, and let's go to the next page. It, and this is in the famous sagas, the saga of Tidrek or Theodoric Frederick, and um, it, it's showing events of um, you know, when there was battles in Russia. Fomenko points out the Russian side. That doesn't mean he's a Russian nationalist, but um, of course his readership is in Russia, so he is going to point this out more. Yes, same like in Hungary, they're going to point out Attila belongs to us. So now, uh, uh, Fomenko is not saying Attila belongs to Russia. He's even pointing out, yes, he was in Scandinavia as well. So now, uh, um, what these Latins, they invented the name Velsinus or, or instead of um, Viking. So now, is um, Attila actually a Viking king? But now we've got another thing. We've got the entire Middle East, one and a half billion people, who are saying, Adila Khan, he's in the Quran. No, he's ours. He's a Muslim. No, he's actually global. Mm -hmm. So what these people did is that they changed it. And um, as you can see, in Scandinavia, they called it Connie. Yes. Um, right. um, um, in Hungary, they call him a Khan. Yes. So um, in England, they would have called him a Kang, King. Yes. So they turn around and say that, um, what do you call it? Yes, Valiki or Viking. Yeah. And, um, uh, and Fomenko goes through these um, old documents like the saga of Tidrek. And he points out what happened there. And he shows, we find the Russian prince, Vladimir, and Attila, who's the chieftain, uh, as the Huns. And um, the thing is, he's pointed out that the Russians, historians have fabricated, and they've given the name, you know, Walid Amir. Now, it's called Vladimir. Now, the thing is, Vladimir, uh -huh. yes, Vladimir, you cannot understand it unless if we look at Arabic. Now, uh, so uh, um, before we go on there, one of your friends added me onto Facebook. So I'm going to reply to him. Yes, in a, in a very short way. He um, he noticed the similarities between German and Arabic. So now what I have done because I, I don't I don't want to get into a political conflict. Now, for example, the word Vladimir is a Russian word in Europe, but the word Vladimir to the Arabs is an Arabic word. So the thing is, I call this an international language. Yes, this is the language of Arabia or Europea. Yes, it is the old language. And another thing many people don't know is that the Arabic Quran is that old Arabic language. And it's only got 400 root words. Only 400. That's why it's easily influ influenced the world. Anyway, the word Vladimir, I checked it out. In um, old Arabic, it, um, um, Walid and Amir, Amir just means the king or the prince, the chose, one of the chosen leaders. So Attila was, was one of the, um, um, the chosen ones, and he's known as the great one. Yeah, you know, they've given him names in Latin, Velsinus or Viltin or Viking or whatever. You know, so the thing is, when we go to different parts of the world, you know, they're going to call him Dulkarnain in the Quran. Yes, they're going to, you know, different names. Um, they'll call him Adil in Turkey or in Iran. But this is a global king, as we can see. Yes. So just uh, um, very so... briefly in between, because I just checked for the meanings. I mean, only official meanings for Waladi and Amir. And yes, Waladi actually seems to refer to yeah child or children. And Amir. Ah! And Amir, ah, I once no, said something ah, about. No. Um, yes? There is the D in the in the middle, yes, because it's been Russified. Um, yes, look for it, the word. It actually comes from the word veli. This is why um, Fomenko pointed out. Let me just see what he wrote. It's because I've lost that page. I'm looking for new information now. Um, he, ah, um, he he put it Velsinus veli. Yes, um, can you see what the Latin mm -hmm. name is? So if you go to the Arabic from the Latin name, what was it? Velsinus. Velkinus, Veli, yes. So the um, Veli. So now the um, um, Veliki, yes, the great Velsinus or Viking, yes. So now the Arabic word Veli, V E L I, 
or um, in uh, or W A L I. It actually means protector. Yes, protector. So now when we put um, Vladimir together, it means prince and protector. Yes. Amir of, would be um, prince or leader of, of an army. Of mm -hmm. Have you found the meaning of the word Wally? I have to check it now. I just was looking at Amir in terms of prince or leader of the ah, people. Ah, yes, I found it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I found it. So so now um, let me just send you this because... Um, yeah, for Wally know, for it says home... governor or lord. So they actually both mean something. I yeah. just found it interesting. Yeah, guardian. Just, yeah. just because yeah, you mentioned, uh, no, when you uh, it, because I, you mentioned I, I, Vladimir we... in terms of Russia. And I was like, wow, both his yeah. names, Wally and Amir, basically mean leader. I just found that curious. Yeah, yeah. You know? have you found the Wikipedia meeting? I, I sent you the, the Wikipedia yes. meaning. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, the Wikipedia meaning shows that, um, you know, he's a guardian and a protector. And the word Amir means like a prince. Yeah. And um, because the Holy Roman Empire was holy. Yes. Um, if it was um, holy, then um, it means that God is the king. And this is what we know about in the Middle Ages. You know, God is the king. Yes, there, there is a song. I liked it, um, a Crusader song. Um, I think it's by um, Chris Burr. We are invincible. God is the king. I've always loved that song. My father used to play it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because my father liked um, these, um, you know, these things, um, you know, from Christy Burr. But, but um, it turned around and says Prince. So Attila was, a, was one of the princes of God. Yes. And um, the thing is, is in Scandinavian history, in some of their myths, which were modified in the 19th century, but um, it's still there. And, um, you know, Attila the Hun is in Hungary. He's in, he's in the German history. So now Otto the Great, yes, was the, was the first official crowned um, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Yes. And if it is, and they're trying to say, no, it wasn't holy. Now, according to the Quran, it even says that the Muslims rejoiced in the victories of the Romans. And these um, Holy Romans, they are the same as the Romans. They invented the Roman Empire. Yes, to hide this history, and they've copied the timeline. Yes, that it just doesn't match that they're um, showing us. Let me just show you what sort of um, gar. I call this garbage. I've got to say it's utter garbage because they're turning around and um. Let me just show you um, um this this um something from the so-called Romans called Theodosius. <laughs> let me just show you the big joke. Yes. So now um here is they're turning around saying five ten floors underground. <laughs> In um, Constantinople, the Romans in the 5th, 6th century have just built this, the ancient Romans. Yeah. And we're building similar places in every city in the world underground to store water. And they're telling us, oh, these guys, you know what, what I mean, who had bronze and copper tools. Yeah. Didn't even have proper iron and they, you know, they're walking around in their sandals. Yeah. And um, things like this. It, it, it just sounds ridiculous. Yes. So, so the story of the Holy Romans is totally different. But um, as I pointed out about the cathedrals, so now this Al-Aqsa Mosque and the other one, Beersheba Mosque, yes. And another thing is, yes, the World War I is so suspicious because um, what many people have not noticed is even if you go to the Balkans today, it, it's, a, it's a backward place. Romania and Bulgaria in the 1990s were basically, you could say, you know, um, uh, Somalia. I'm being serious here. Even Nigeria today is more modern than Romania and Bulgaria, what it was in 1990. That um, if you went from England, just for being English, you could walk into many government offices. That's what Bulgaria was, yes, in the 1990s. Um, there's even a drama called um, The Gravy Train that, ca that um, came out in the 90s, British Channel 4, um, The Gravy Train, that shows you know, um, just how backwards Eastern Europe was. Yeah. And the thing is, the Middle East were, was just to make people see the reality. It was a basic shithole 150 years ago. Nobody wanted to live there. That um, people who went, you know, to visit there, they thought it's a joke. Yeah. That it, even um, 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 people who went from, from Europe who thought, hey, we're going to move. Yes, from Germany in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, no, I mean 1920s and 30s, 1880s, because it was so uncomfortable for people who believed in one God, yeah, in many principalities and when um, Germany united. Well, anyway, the photos are a forgery, and Kaiser, we can't find him. And do you know why I'm saying these, these buildings are important in the Middle East? Because there is another strange thing. The Ottoman Empire basically didn't produce much. At that time, we're talking about the Balkans and um, the entire Middle East that they ruled. 
But the but check this out. The Germans. The Germans in World War One, Kaiser didn't exist. It's just fake history. Yeah. A building something something um um strange. Um the historians have lied about this and they called it um the Berlin to Baghdad Railway. That was um the Germans were building. Now they're going to turn around and say the Ottoman are building this. Now the thing is, um, this is very suspicious because what they don't tell you the truth is, yes, this railway was actually Baghdad was not the end. They were actually building a railway to go from Berlin to Mecca, which is totally suspicious that even I can't figure it out. Now, the thing is, somebody will say, why have you just brought up Mecca? Because we brought it up before. Yes. About Moses going there. Yes. With the children of Israel. Um, so the thing is, um, but um, that person, um, what he's, um, I didn't like his final statement because um, let me show you what he actually says in the end. Because the thing is, I'm hoping that true history can end conflict, can end hatred, yes. that people people will become gentlemen. Like, do you know what I was watching the other day on YouTube? I just thought I'd have a look. Yes, yeah, so that I can um, feel it. Um, I was seeing um, what's going on in the West Bank. Some people will call it Palestine. Some will call it Israel. Now, the thing is, yeah, um, th there's a video of a man and a woman driving past. I don't know if, if that was um, an inside job. Um, by the state or um, but the thing is they're driving past somebody through a brick and they were Jewish people. The thing is that even though they were Jewish civilians, there's a woman in the car, but he's armed with a gun and the local people can't have a gun. Now, but one thing is um, the people look very terrified and um, there's no need to attack somebody like that. But then there is another thing. I saw another thing. I saw um, there's a video by um, um, there is a group in Israel um, I, I forgot who they are. Um, it's an Israeli group. And um, the thing is, they're trying to bring about peace. And um, they make many videos of atrocities that um, the Israeli side are doing. And um, they showed um, the Israeli soldiers just attacking random children who were going through checkpoints, things like this, throwing them on the floor, dragging girls, pulling their hair and throwing them on the floor, you know. So the thing is, I turned around and thought, hey, we cannot continue to live like this because other people have falsified history. Yeah. Yes. So we've really got to the we've really got to uh, get past this because other people have falsified it because they're making money. A lot of it is about money as well. But anyway, the thing is, so the, um, the strange thing is, the um, Germans are trying to build a train line to Mecca. Now the world is trying to hide this, yeah. But um, I noticed that um, this train line, yeah, I had a look. Actually, it goes through um, what you would call um, Israel or Palestine, and it's going all the way. Um, it's going all, it goes all the way down to Mecca. Now, the British wanted to stop this. But one, the, German, the, the Turks didn't have the capability for this. The Germans were working in Germany. They're working their, their butts off. And um, the thing is, they're working very hard. Um, you have to find the iron ore, the metal, everything, then ship it through the Balkans, everything through, through Turkey to, um, to the other side of the world. Why the hell are the Germans doing this? Why would they want to do this? Then another thing, the Germans trained the entire so-called Turkish army to fight the British and the French in World War One. Yeah, Tur Turkey was a backwards, basically, you know, you know, we're talking Africa here. Why would they do this? Um, they're not going to gain any money. Turkey economically had nothing to offer. They built the, uh, um, they did everything that even Izmir clock tower, I checked it out, the Germans built it. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's Arabic style. But um, the thing is, if the Arabic style came from the Middle East, why are the Germans building this? Yes, I think it, it, it was the Germans or, or people from Europe who built it. Let me just um, have a look. They call it the Sat Kulesi. Yeah, Sat Kulesi. Yes. And the thing is, um, you know, many of these things, the Germans supplied the bullets, the weapons, the uniforms, everything for the Ottoman army. Well, uh, a large, a large thing, even to manufacture the. Let's say if the Turks manufactured a bit themselves, the Germans built all the infrastructure. Why were they doing this? This shows that um, there is something else really going on, and the history of the Holy Holy Roman Empire is a total lie. Yeah. Ah, it says. Oh, look at this. Yeah. History has, of course, been forged. But um, have a look. The Turks couldn't even design this clock tower, yeah, which is supposed to be Arabic, Oriental, yeah, and it's designed by somebody, you know, Raymond Charles Perret, yes, you know, um, somebody from, um, 
Landes in France. What's he doing from Europe? Why are the Europeans going there designing this? So the truth is, it's the opposite way round. So now this so Al-Aqsa Mosque on Temple Mount that many people want to demolish, yeah, I would say to them, think again. Yes, I would say to them, think again, because the thing is, it is not what we think it is. Yes, and um, the thing is, it's not just that there's all these other buildings. And let me just um, show you Medina um, now in the last hundred years. There's a city called Medina in um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and um, there's a strange thing, but um, many people don't notice these strange things, that um, it just looks like the Gothic cathedrals without modification in Europe. And I thought, hey, um, this um, just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now they've demolished these buildings because, you know, for tourism purposes, and they've updated it. Yeah, maybe because it's hard to date. Let's see if I can still find this. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, it's exactly the same like a Gothic cathedral. So it, put, it puts the question, who actually built this place? Oh, I can't believe that I can't find this <sighs> when you need it. <laughs> uh, I, 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 well, I didn't know that we'd mention it today. Let me just um, have a look. Ah, maybe it's in this folder. Yes, I found it. Now, now this is supposed to be, yeah, um, let me just um, set. This is supposed to be the, the city of Medina, um, you know, around um, um, 1900. Now, the thing is, I'm going to magnify this for you. And this is supposed to be the mosque of the of um, what they call the Holy Prophet or the city of Medina, which is next door to Mecca, like you could turn around, say, from Vienna to Salzburg. Yes, not very far. Or, or Frankfurt to Dusseldorf. Yes. Yeah, or, or going from Cannes to, um, what's that place called? From Cannes to um, Marseille. Yeah, or from London to, to um, um, Birmingham or to Manchester. Um, let me just give you a magnification of this building, and then you'll say, yeah, it's clear, even the bricks, many things are, um, it's basically Gothic. And the thing is, um, these are the buildings that we, but without the walls, because it's hotter over there. Yes, and the walls at the top, yeah, uh, uh, that are a bit higher, it's not the first floor, it's, it's a bit higher. And um, you can see the bricks, the arches, everything. This is nothing to do with the Muslim architecture, because now they've modified it. Have you received it? This is Medina yeah. next door to Mecca. So, so when 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 one has a look at this, it begs the question: Did they get this from Europe, or did Europe get this from them? Yes. So the thing is, um, you know, it doesn't look like these. Um, let me just um, show you inside this Mecca building here. Yeah, no, Medina building. This is the actual inside. And do you know what they're telling us? They're telling us. Let me show you what type of people are living in that region. And um, they're telling us, um, you know, some. Some crazy story, um, um, what they're describing these people as some some other type of people saying these are the type of people who built this place. Yeah, that, um, you know, uh, these are the rich guys here. Now, these are the rich guys and they built this place that they managed to put these marble or um, other type of com columns and everything. They managed to stabilize it with the arches and with the, um, you know, the, the ribbed vaults that we have in the cathedrals and everything inside. Have you received the picture? Yeah. Uh, um, but the thing is, that building is supposed to be about 200 years old, so we're going further back. Now, um, a serious question is, why are the Germans trying to build a train line from Berlin to Mecca? Why? Yes. This doesn't make sense. Why are the Germans supplying guns, bullets, and everything to the Ottoman Empire? Why were they? Do that was the main industrial base mm -hmm. of those three people who were fighting Germany, Austria and the Ottoman Empire were fighting against the rest of them. Yes. So now the thing is, why? Yes. Was Germany arming Austria and the Ottoman Empire and doing all of it? Yeah. At its cost. Yeah. And they know that these people can't pay back. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was not capable of paying back. Everybody knows that that um, at that time, Hungary for that time would be classed the middle world. Yes, you know, and um, these other places that um, the Austrian Empire ruled. Yeah, in the mountains and things like that. Even Austria was nowhere near as advanced as what Germany was in, in 1900. So why are they going to do this? It's because the history that we've been told is, is a total lie. And it's got something to do with what we, what we today call Islam. Yes? What we call today Islam, because there's Arabic writing in Europe, there's these Arabic coins, and so. But anyway, let me just show you the first um, German king's name. 
Uh, this is in the book, um, you know, Jerusalem is in Europe. Yeah, the German king, his name is Otto. Yes. So the, uh, the thing is, it's, it's very, very, very strange. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Ah, um, his name, he was the first, was he just called Otto? Yeah. Let me just see. Yes, Otto the First or Otto yeah. the Great. Yeah, we can't seem to find anything about him apart from he was the great grandson of Charlemagne. Yes, or the great great grandson. Yeah. So um, the thing is, uh, and then um, the Crusades. Yeah. Uh, and the, the strange thing is they're launching Crusades against the Germans. Yes, and against the Holy Roman Empire, which totally just does not make sense that the Vatican is going out of its way. Yes, to launch crusades. Yeah, and the Vatican, um, you know, it shows. Uh, it, it seems to show that they were first based in Istanbul, and then um, uh, um, they moved. So the thing is, this is something that people are going to have to really examine and rethink because it's same like saying America is fighting against Iraq and Afghanistan. Why is why the hell are America going to invade the um, the United Kingdom or Australia? Aren't they supposed to be allies? At the same time, it just doesn't make sense. While the Holy Roman Empire is fighting against the Muslims, oh yeah, the Vatican's invading the Holy Roman Empire. It doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah. And, uh, and it's normal practice that we're doing it year after year, century after century. Yes? So why are they going to be fight? And then they're saying the Byzantine Empire. We cannot find this Eastern Roman Empire. It's just a fabrication of the timeline. The entire history is a forgery. It looks like that, um, that um, from what from what Fomenko points out and from what I have found, it looks like the, there was somebody called Judah that is based in Babylon. And Babylon was, um, let, me, let me remind you again, where was Babylon in the Middle Ages? This one, I don't know. Ah, so I've not mentioned this yet. Ah, okay. Now, uh, in the, many maps in the Middle Ages, yeah, show that Babylon it was actually what we call Egypt today. Yes. Um, right, you may have mentioned it. The, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, the thing is, um, um, and and those people, um, um, uh, they had Osir as the son of God, Osiris. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have I mentioned this? Yes. Yes. So, so the thing is, um, let me show you the parties of the Middle Ages. Now, if anybody reads, um, you know, uh, um, the Old Testament, they will notice that, um, what do you call it, um, Jerusalem or the children of Israel were held, held captive by the Babylonians. Yes. Or, and Jerusalem was occupied. Yes. So that sounds like Babylonia from Egypt. Yeah. Captivity. Yeah. Ezekiel. And then Ezekiel went to Babylon. Yes. Um, and the thing is, we can't seem to find the, the fake um, Babylon in, in a Iraq or wherever. We can't seem to find it. Um, you know, they're saying it's in Iraq, ancient mm -hmm, times, mm -hmm. it's gone. And they're showing us a few things that you could tell they modified it and they built something. And, um, and they're showing us, hey, this is the ancient city of Babylon. We can't seem to find anything else. Yeah. So um, what we've got is, um, um, I've sent you, um, oh, it's not gone through. Uh, um, it, I mean, um, the Old Testament in the Bible, the Babylonian captivity, Ezekiel, yes, um, ha has to go to Jerusalem, things like this. Ezekiel, no, Ezekiel was taken to Babylonia during the second, second stage of the captivity. That, yes, is actually Babylon Cairo, yes, and those people, they were called Judah, or what, the Judah of that time. Like, for example, let me explain, there is the America of the year 1800 which is not the same as the America at the same time as what they call, um, you know, the Civil War. The America of the 1920s is not the same as, as the America of John F. Kennedy and the America of George Bush is totally different. So now this Babylon, what they do is they invade Jerusalem and they've taken um, many people as captive. So they have occupied Jerusalem and their priests and these Babylonian priests, They've got Osiris or Uzair as the son of God. This is where um, the, the Quran story is important because it turns around and says that these people, Judah, that these Jews that Professor Fomenko even points out, let me show um, what he shows, that even as far as Russia, yes, um, even as far as Russia, the word Jew um, in the Middle Ages, yes, um, what do you call it, referred to the priests, yes? 
to the priesthood. And so um, in Egypt, they had um, a lot of religious priesthood in Babylon. And um, Fomenko even shows that uh, many people went there for, uh, for burial ceremonies, yeah, um, depending on um, what their burial system was. So um, the Slavs, um, the word Jew and priest, it was, the, it was the same thing, yes? So modern Judaism is something else. It is not the same Judaism as before. This has even been, this has even been stated by um, a professor who's got a um, Jewish origin in France. Henry Atzlan even turned around and says that in the Middle Ages, the big war, it was between what is what is called Christianity or what you want to call, call um, you know, Babylon Christianity. And they were fighting against what was called Islam. Um, Islam is the, is the kingdom of Israel. Yes. And the word Judah, they've said it split into Judah. But um, this kingdom of Israel split into two parts. Then um, Judah sees Jerusalem. And then um, when they seized Jerusalem, they had allies there who were declaring Christ is the son of God. Yes, already they had allies and the Crusades were fighting um, for this city, Jerusalem, which is called Istanbul. Now, somebody will say, um, David, um, uh, it's very difficult to um, believe that, um, you know, that um, Istanbul is Jerusalem. Well, let me just um, um, show people something. Yeah. Um, how many this, people in the this football This you've shown stadium, pretty well with the Bosporus images, no, from the so-called Renaissance. Yeah. I think yeah. you've, you've demonstrated this uh, with the crucifixion yeah, of Christ. When is the last Christ time you went to a football match? Well, me, never actually. <laughs> At least not in a stadium. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, anyway, okay. Th uh, since it's so, so long ago, um, I'll send um, a picture so that then um, it will give you an idea. Well, you can see, um, uh, God knows how many people are in this football stadium. Yes? Who knows how many people? But now the, the suspicious thing is, yes, let's just say there's 50,000 people in that stadium. Yes? If there is 50,000 people in that stadium, then do you know what? Um, you know, just 150 years ago, this so-called Jerusalem in the Middle East, when you go there to Israel or Palestine, it only had 10,000 people. There's more people in a football stadium than this village that's called Quds that they are telling us is called Jerusalem today. More yes. people in a, and their time to tell us during the Middle Ages, people are fighting over this place. There's nobody there to fight over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but wait, let me just show you the walls of this city. Do you know what they're telling us? Um, let me just show you. Um, you know, when they even in the Old Testament, in the Bible, they turn around and say, when we're after King Solomon, Israel and Judah split up. Yeah. Let, let me just show you. Um, Rehoboam, the King Rehobo Jeroboam, is it? Or Rehoboam. Um, um, let me see. They turn around and say that um, when people were fighting, yeah, um, Jeroboam's revolt, you know, when they say that Israel and Judah split up, yes, um, when they split up, um, you know, into um, two kingdoms. What they're telling us is that this place is Jerusalem and we can't uh, we can barely find 10,000 people there in the 19th century. And they're telling us that, um, oh, no, I mean, ancient times they had battles and, um, you know, half a million people died for this place. Right. Yeah. And the, oh, this is in, in um, let me see, Abijah's troops slaughtered 500,000 people that day of the army of ancient Israel in two chronicles. Let me just send, send it because somebody's going to turn and say, that does not sound like a battle that is going on. Yes, in that, um, you know, in that, um, you know, um, tin can hole or, or, or dump in the Middle East. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, no offense, but this is not the Jerusalem. 500,000 people, then that means another 500,000 people. To kill 500,000 people, the opposite army must have had at least 500,000 people. And then 100,000 must have escaped, and the opposite army must have had, had more reserves. Oh, Jeroboam, yeah, yeah actually. It turned around says that he had 800,000 soldiers. Let me just show you. Jeroboam, he had um, almost a million. Now, they're telling us, this um, so-called ancient Israel, yeah, he had... 800,000 brave soldiers. What the hell is going on? Yeah. I only so, know that so in the... official history lessons, even they sometimes say, yeah, they inflated the numbers to make themselves look more important. That's even an official oh, oh, history. But, but now we've got more of a problem because we know that regardless of history, people have preserved this grandfathers in traditions. They were fighting over Jerusalem for centuries. 
that this is so big all over the world that um, the old people are still alive in our generation. We're very lucky. People in their 90s, some people who are 100. But have a look at this photograph, yes, of Jerusalem in, um, in the Middle East called Quds. In 1896, they changed the name to Jerusalem. Look at this city's walls. How the hell could they have fought crusades over this place? There's not even no defenses. I could climb over that wall, so can you. <laughs> 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 you know, there's children who are going to come back from school and from college. But then when you go to Istanbul, yes, Istanbul is the only city that it looks like they were fighting over, Constantinople. That is the only place because that is the place where it's got three layers of walls and it's got great walls. Yes, three layers of defenses. Yes, all the way around, uh, around the city. And you'll see half these defenses, they've still got the evidence from, you know, 1,000 years ago, things like this, that, that um, the city walls have been blown up. Yeah, we've still got the remains of these um, damaged walls throughout Constantinople. I say Constantinople because, you know, many people are anti-Muslim and they, uh, they find it hard to believe it's Istanbul. Yeah, you know, the Muslims have got this. Yeah, well, get over this. Yeah, you know what I mean? This is nothing to do with, you know, religion or race or anything. The fact is that place is the Jerusalem that's mentioned in the Bible. Yes? So, so, so that's the Jerusalem that's mentioned in the Bible. But, uh, but then I don't blame some people yeah, that, um, uh, that they are anti-Middle Eastern yeah, up to a certain extent because now the Muslims have come to a crossroads. Yeah? I'm, going to, I'm going to have to make this clear because um, um, this year several people have said to me they want to read the Quran. Now, the thing is, the Muslims themselves, let me just show you this. Um, the, uh, Islam has become embarrassing um, uh, in many places around the world. Yes, that um, uh, when I say embarrassing, there's many strange videos, crazy videos going around all over the Internet that um, people are laughing at Islam. This is a fact. We cannot deny it. People look sure. down on Islam. People are laughing at Islam. It's because uh, there's something wrong with it. Yes. And the thing is, I'm not going to hide this. Why should I hide this? If I hide this, then then what sort of um, um, a researcher am I? Because people will say he's trying to push us towards this, and he knows that this, um, you know, uh, the, there's a big joke here. Yeah, the world is laughing at Islam. There's something clearly that's wrong with Islam itself, modern Islam. Yes, I'm not talking about the Quran as a historical document. I I, I clearly state that is a different historical book. Now, let me just give you some examples of um, how people are laughing. Like um, I came across this recently because um, many uh, Muslims sent me this and they asked me saying, hey, um, what information do you have about this? And I had a lot, um, luckily for them. Yeah. Um, let me just um, let me show you. Um, look at this. You know, um, there's this man here. I've never heard of him before. I only found, found him out um, about four weeks ago. And um, in England, I don't think many people know him, but he's supposed to be famous in America. I just did a quick search on him. He, he sounds like um, somebody who's making money. He made $300,000 in court or something. And he's called um, David Wood or something. Some people say he's an evangelical or something. So two weeks ago, I found him. I posted one of his videos. Now, have a look at his words. His words. Yes. And he says, what's in their own... He talks about Muslims. Muslims. Showing to non-Muslims what's in their own Muslim sources and their own Muslim manuscripts after decades of Muslim apologists lying about the history of the Quran. Wait a minute. Now, the thing is, if you're going to make a statement like this, yes, he's made a statement, yes, about differences in the manuscripts of the Quran. And he's claiming that these Quranic manuscripts are Muslim sources. And he's saying that they're Muslims' manuscripts or their own manuscripts. Make sure you keep this on screen for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. I just want people to see it. Yeah. yeah. Because the thing is, if we do not get to the bottom of history, if we don't, then we're never going to move forward. The people in power are going to walk over everybody. Now, the thing is, at the moment in the world, we've got a great chance. Leave this man's picture on the screen. We've got a great chance. Yes. The people in power that want to build a new world order, we can help and shape and influence this world order too. That before it turns into chaos, before they decide to bring an absolute dictatorship, we have got to show them that we have become mature, that we've grown up and grown forward. Like I remember I asked a rabbi um, long ago and I said, 
as the children of Israel, what are we chosen for? And he said, we're, we're chosen for to be God's people and to, um, you know, um, set an example in many things. So uh, on that day, I understood what he said to me. He said that um, we're chosen to help people, to help civilize the world. Now, Christianity, yes, I've noticed that um, within Christianity, there is a lot of hatred. Yes, towards, especially towards Islam more than anybody else. Where is this so-called merciful, beautiful Jesus Christ? Now, I remember when some Christians came to my door and they turned around and asked me my background or something. Yeah. And, um, you know, I told them a little. And when I told them a little, they walked away. They never came back. Oh, wow. Next time they asked me, I turned around and told them, I just told them I'm a certain type of Christian just to test them. Then I noticed they kept on coming back. Next time oh, they no. came, I told them, um, you know, I'm following, um, you know, revi revisionist Buddhism. This is about four or five years ago, <laughs> um, just before. Yeah, I don't know where I thought of revisionist Buddhism. They turned around and said, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, it doesn't exist. <laughs> but anyway, now look at this man here. And then there's other videos that they sound so professional. Oh, these people are good speakers. Yeah. Um, um, let me just send you these. Yeah. Um, look at this. It says, did Muhammad exist? Um, they've got other videos. Um, um, let me just show you some of these um, crazy things. Fake Quran manuscripts. So now the thing is, I will go back to this man again. Yes. Because the thing is, yes, either he doesn't know or he is a liar. I raised my voice to say this so that the world can hear because he speaks with a loud voice after decades of Muslim apologists, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I like his videos, by the way. I'm not going to lie. Um, the, uh, the similar people like him, I like them because I can laugh at them. It's entertainment. Yes, I like it because <laughs> it actually gave me something to do. Something, um, because I remember that um, when these Muslims approached me, I had to have rows with them. Um, so that Because they asked me, can we answer this? Then when I gave them the answer, I said, this is the history. Now, the thing is, I had to have rows with them. Believe it or not, that um, it was a row um, that I turned around and the, uh, um, that I had to produce extra evidence. Yeah, so let me just show you what is wrong with these Quran manuscripts. Now let's have a look at this. This is why I've told people, if you want to learn the Quran, yes, the translations online, they're all a joke. They're all forgeries mm -hmm. or based on forgeries. Yes, now 98% of them are correct or 90% plus. Or maybe I'm wrong, it could be 80%. I, I shouldn't give these figures. Yeah, 80%, uh, but the thing is, I will show you where the forgery is. Now the Muslims have been memorizing the Quran. <coughs> For decades, oh, it's that Chinese oil. Yeah, it's, it had spice in it. Yeah, so I, um, yeah. Well, anyway, now look at this. The great, the great gentlemen from the British Empire, they invaded Egypt. Yes. Do you know what they did? Oh, they were very nice and kind. They got hold of the local people's manuscripts and they dumped them in the river and they yeah. burnt them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then they replaced these ones or with their puppet ruler. It's like, I mean, me coming to Austria, I get rid of the prime minister and the president and I find Raphael and I say, uh, you are the new um, you are the new chancellor of Austria. <laughs> All you have to do is you have to introduce a new history. You know, that's the only yes. thing that's being asked. Mm -hmm. But but now the serious thing is, yeah. So what these people did, why are they going to go there? Um, confiscate all the manuscripts, burn them, and dump them in the River Nile. Have you received it? Yes. Why are they going to do this? One, if we're going to speak modern nationalism, that if, if I'm Egyptian, I'll say it's not your country. Get out. Did you apply for a visa? No, you came here with guns. And then today you've replaced these manuscripts. And then today your people, you've told them on Wikipedia and everywhere else, these are Muslim manuscripts. As if the Muslims can hear this, yeah, the Muslims should speak up and say back to these people and say, hey, you are a liar. These are not Muslim manuscripts. They are not Muslim sources. Your, your people, yes, the people, the states that represent you, the United States, the British, the French, the European Union and their allies, their predecessors, they invaded these lands. They put these manuscripts here. Yes. So now if somebody says that the Muslims, the Muslims need to wake up because what do you think these people were doing? Now, Islam has become embarrassing because now they put these strange things that, um, you know, it turns around and says that camel piss is medicine. 
I'm not joking. You'll find um, 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 videos online of um, some people in the Middle East um, wiping camel piss on their face. Yeah. And um, the thing is, it's ridiculous. I'm not going to hide it. Yeah. But um, um, the thing is, um, you know, the thing is, um, who put these books there? Not just the Quran, but these other so-called Islamic or Islamist manuscripts. They went there. They opened the entire museum. Let, let's go. Let's go to this so-called Quran in case somebody will turn around and say, oh, David, you're just making this up. Yeah, I'm not making it up. It's because I had to go through this. This is why I've always turned around and said these the Muslims memorize the Quran. Let me show you an example. Here is an Islamic school before the Stalinist Leninist Quran arrived there from St. Petersburg. They're memorizing the Quran and they don't have no paper, no manuscripts whatsoever. Have you received this picture? Yes. Yes. So they didn't even have these manuscripts. Along come the Europeans and see. <laughs> We'll put one in Tunis. Our French honourable soldiers. Oh, they're just raping a few girls here and there. They're only rapists. Yes, um, you know, they've occupied the buildings here. And, um, oh, we came with guns. We're only murderers. We're um, going to, you know, compile our version of the Quran with our puppets here. And then we're going to put it, put it in the museums. Now, check this out. Um, read through this carefully. So what they've done is that um, they're um, putting these Quran manuscripts in these museums. Um, let's look at this so-called Right Honourable Committee for the, um, who, who puts these Qurans in these manuscripts, who put the different spelling. Let's have a look. Prominent committee members, have you received this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one guy called Bergstrasser. He was a German linguist. Uh, excuse me. Um, this is supposed to be, what's that guy's name again? He, um, he's embarrassed himself. Yes, based on the proof. He's made himself look like a clown, an idiot. Yes, because he's spoken out to a billion people. Yes, or two billion Muslims and to um, um, a billion or two billion Christians. He's speaking to the whole world here. And he's advertised um, Muslim. It's their own sources and their own manuscripts. He's a liar. Mm. I just checked. And I've just found that these manuscripts in Cairo, uh -uh, who the hell's Bergstrasser? Isn't he from Europe? Isn't he from the, wasn't he working with the British Empire and the French? And maybe just to mention Is this it? in one second, that when you now say British and French, of course, you're basically saying British and French and United States after they were conquered by this Vatican force or whatever, right? Yes. Yeah. But uh, so now the thing is, I am not blaming the people today, but if there is going to be, you know, clowns who are, uh, who are just going to be laughing, making up their own things, let's have a look at these other so-called committee members who compiled this Quran, the spelling, yeah? And they made sure that there was methodological differences and they tried to say, Does, we put them aside. Arthur Jeffrey, a Protestant Australian, what's he doing going to Egypt while it's occupied? It seemed like, imagine that we tried to go to Afghanistan 10 years ago I would turn around and say, Raphael, what the hell are you doing in Afghanistan? That is dodgy as hell. What are you doing Don't there? Don't mind me. I'm just forging history. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now these people have dumped these things in the rivers and everything. So now they're trying to tell us that these Quran manuscripts have got differences. So now in Tunisia, they had the same thing. They set up their own committee. Yes. From um, people that um, they selected um, young men. Um, in their teenage years, took them to France and then um, gave them education. They stayed there many years. And then they sent them back and said, compile the Quran. But there is no evidence these people compiled the Quran. So now these people, they go back um, to France and um, to Tunisia. And then the, we suddenly got a Quran manuscript there. And then do you know what we find in these manuscripts? This is what we find. I sent you a few examples before, but um, I'll keep it short. Yes. And the thing is, so, but anyway, it shows you that I give you, we give you. What they did was um, they played around with vowels and consonants here and there, and they put silent letters in the manuscripts. There's, um, um, you know, because people don't understand Arabic, so it's going to be difficult to show it. Like what they did was, for example, yes, I've got You've it You've shown it with like the diacritics, yes, mm -hmm. and the silent letters. Yeah. Not just the diacritics, silent letters. Yeah, like here it says in the name of God, um, the most gracious, the most merciful. They added two silent letters on there that in some Quran manuscripts, it's not there. Now, the purpose of them adding that there is that it will make sure that this sentence has got 19 letters. Right. You see? Yes. So the thing is, um, they're playing around with this um, 
19. You know, this 19 is, it goes so much deeper that um, yesterday somebody was turning around and asking me, like, um, for example, and we turned around and said, um, in Albania right now and in Kosovo, there is a movement that many people have, uh, have are um, against the Mother Teresa. I said, and um, he mentioned it, and um, what I turned around and said, um, do I still have this? This was only yesterday. I thought I would have saved it. Yeah, let me just show you um, what the strange thing is. Nope, I haven't saved it. You mean Mother Teresa, thing... this so, supposed saint, which, ah, which um, supposedly she, was yeah. helping the children, and there's different stories about her. I know that that much. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there's different stories. And um, the thing is, um, you know, of course, um, the deeper you look at this, you will find that something else is going on. Um, Mother Teresa. Yeah, once again, um, for anybody who's listening, I'm going to say, yeah. Well, usually yes. these kind of individuals are shy away from direct confrontation. So I I guarantee you, this man who, uh, um, who some people will say he was a gentleman. And then, uh, of course, I understand if he's going to talk about Islam. But if he's going to claim that these are your manuscripts to the Muslims, prove it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Prove it. If you're just going to make a statement, prove it. And if he's and um, the thing is, as I can see, he's he's got no evidence whatsoever. I'm looking for this Mother Teresa thing, but um, but um, ah yes, um, this was the delay. But um, I think I found it now. Yes, um, I've just found it. Yes. So the thing is, this Mother Teresa thing is highly suspicious. That um, that um, if you have have a look at this, um, you will turn around and think this is. Totally dodgy and totally um, suspicious. Uh, having to transfer all these files and get them ready. Jesus. Right, Mother Teresa, <laughs> you're going to start laughing at this. Um, let me just send you a few more other things. Her, her story, everything is um, totally just suspicious. Yeah, um, let me... Um, just um, remove the non-Mother Teresa things. Um, because I remember um, somebody yesterday, because they were mentioning it, saying in the Balkans, it's become a major issue. So I turned around and thought, hey, um, I'm going to have a look. Same like um, with um, there's the story of the so-called, um, you know, this Alexander or Skanderbeg in Albanian. Oh, I'm sending the pictures to the wrong place. I should be sending it to your, um, <clears throat> to your Facebook. Yeah. Um, let me just... Um, do this again. Um, the thing is, what you will notice, the number 19, this and that, I just sent him a few basic things. I said later on this year, if I have the time, um, I will go to, uh, um, I will send them to you. But um, anyway, have a look at this. It's suspicious as hell. Mother Teresa becomes beautified oh. as Saint mm -hmm. Mother Teresa on the 19th of October. So when they, um, <clears throat> and there's many media things, 19 facts about this famous missionary. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, she was canonized as a saint on the 19th anniversary of her death. Yes. Um, she became a saint on the 19th of October. Yes. Um, she had two miracles um, within those 19 years before she became canonized. And um, what do you call it? She established her first missionary of charities on October the 19th, 1950. Uh, you're beginning to see it. Same like right. the so-called war between the, um, um, you know, in Kosovo, Polje, um, it's supposed to be a famous battle of um, the Serbs and the Turks. It's supposed to be, you know, on October the 19th. And it's linked to the history of Mother Teresa. Yeah, I was um, spent sending it yesterday. So as you can see, there's a lot of forged history. And the thing is, you know, um, Mother Teresa now in, in many places in the Balkans, especially where there's Albanian communities, they have a Mother Teresa Bulvari named after this lady. Yes, but the thing is, um, the number 19 says it all. Yes, that it's a forged, fabricated history that um, people will have to compare it to other videos and they'll see it. And the thing is, it just shows that there is something wrong with this history and they've just um, turned her turned her into a saint. Um, the thing is, there is um, there is no evidence for what she exactly did. There's uh, many many th stories that are told of other things um, that she might possibly yes. have done, you know, with the children. And the thing is, um, you know, those things um, uh, normally get deleted online, unfortunately. Yes. So so um, the the thing is, um, um, we've diverted from Germany. Yes. 
and um, <laughs> from Arabia. It's okay. Uh, and I just like to a... say, for I think it's okay for now. We're also already closing on to two hours. However, I would like yeah. to say for everyone to whom this may appear, you know, we're going from here to there or you in this case. I want to say, you know, chaos and order are a matter of perspective. And this topic is so incredibly intertwined that I would say it's normal that, you know, and this is also the important thing because most people only think exclusively about Germany or they know only about the Bible, only about this. And what you bring to the table because of all this research and interconnections you've made, you can actually tie it together. So I'd like to thank you for that. Yes. And anything else you want to mention which you think is important yes. for this episode? Let yes, I will now. tell you what is very important. Yes, the purpose of finding out mm -hmm. history. Yes, purpose of finding out is to actually make life a better world, yes. to actually help to end conflict. Now, if, if there is going to be people just for their religious agenda or for their political agenda or their financial agenda who are pushing things, trying to push hatred, trying to push more arguments, and they have no historical evidence, and even if the history is a lie, Yes, and they're pushing these things and they're laughing and insulting people. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like it because, for example, it's bad enough as it is. It's like, I'm not going to lie to you. I like many things about Israel. I like many things about Palestine. Now, the thing is, I have to go out there in the world and I have to justify Israel to many people. Right. I have to justify. Now, the thing is, uh, many of the conflicts that are in Israel are caused by people outside of Israel. Yeah. And many of the religious things that were caused were caused by people from outside Israel who forged manuscripts and who forged the history and created this scenario mm -hmm. two, three hundred years ago. If they didn't do this at that time, we would not have this problem today. Yeah. So for future generations, what we've got to do is any lies that are there remove them so that we will teach our children and our grandchildren saying, hey, don't get into violence. Don't let nationalism push you. Don't let your anger push you so that you're going to hit somebody and attack somebody. Now, the thing is, many people who are making these videos online, who's, who's saying all these stories and many things, they know that the way that they're even speaking is going is encouraging violence yes yes indeed well this then, is easy to discern i think whether one deals with it with respect and tries to hear all sides or whether one just tr does the, to, yes. sneer, to sneer at someone yes. or to mock someone yeah yes so so the thing is it's 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 like this if you're going if somebody is going to turn around now and they're going to um turn around and um they're going to insult and they're laughing and they uh, um even there's the transgender community that they would find this offensive Yes, um, uh, there are many people who fight for transgender rights. Yes, um, you know, so the thing is, they're going to turn around and say, hey, how could you just suddenly make an insult like this and then publish it online? Yeah, and um, things like this and start laughing because you are trying to show that there's some kind of hatred and enmity and some whatever. And um, the type of words he uses to try trying to be intellectual. Yes, he knows that many people didn't like it. Yes, he knows this. And shall I be honest to you? Yes, I'm not, I'm not going to defend Israel for its actions. But what I am going to say is the Jewish people are a minority in many places around the world. And they're not speaking up. They're not. And there are people in the Islamic community and in the Jewish community just for their own war between Judaism and Christianity yes. who are taking advantage of this. And believe it or not, the Jews are in the middle. And yes... Um, the Jewish people who did go to Israel, yes, many atrocities were done, which are um, beyond reason. Yes, but um, humanity does these things because somebody else sets the setting, the game set and match, that you create a scenario where you know people are going to lose control and their anger. Yes, that um, these people who are making these videos now, who are turning around to the Muslims and saying, these are your manuscripts, your manuscripts, and they're pointing the finger. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, why don't they turn around and say, oh, no, it was our ancestors who went to your countries and we killed people and raped people. And then we put these manuscripts in your countries. And then today we're going to attack you just for having these manuscripts after we raped and pillaged your countries in colonial times and took the resources. And then we put this fake history there. If you're going to if you're going to turn around and say it like that against entire civilizations trying to cause a conflict. 
then you are the enemy. Yes. And they are the enemy because people like this, yes, caused, thing, caused these problems many centuries ago. Now, if, if people want to correct it, they can turn around and say, sorry, I got misinformation. Yeah, I've just shown them several Quran manuscripts. You know, what the hell were the British doing there going to somebody else's country with the French and all these other businessmen, Thomas Cook? And they're going there, getting hold of somebody else's books, dumping them in the river, burning them, putting, the, putting their puppets in power. Yes. And then, um, you know, rewriting Quran manuscripts and saying, hey, this is yours. Oh, don't worry. This is genuinely a Muslim manuscript. Oh, they right. set up the Islam, um, Arabic art and Islamic art and historical art museums and all these other places in Damascus, in Cairo, in Beirut. They set all these things up. And today, yes, um, organizations that they've set up in the West, they've given licenses for it, like Wikipedia, religious organizations, and they're publishing history and saying, oh, these are genuine originals of Islamic documents. They're not. Professor Fomenko even pointed this out and said, hey, these documents were left there, written by the Jesuits and their allies and the Europeans, and they dumped them there. Yes. So this is what they've done. Yes. And now the thing is, um, you know, if I'm going to make, turn around and make a statement, yeah, he's got to remember that the Jewish people, they turn around and say, you know, this is our ancestry. This is our families. Yes. And the thing is, the purpose of him was to cause conflict with one group of people. But people like that will cause conflicts with other people. Yes. So the, the thing is, uh, um, you know, it's a democracy. I have the right to speak same like him. Anyway, Raphael, let's leave it at that. Thank you very, very much, David, yes. as always. And any questions, we'll deal with it some other time. Okay, yes. Perfect. Have a great day. Thank you. And you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, bye.